Hi class, in this video I wanted to show you how to um, add billboards to Rhino as well as add materials um, into the file pretty easily and use UV mapping to get them to the right scale. So it's really easy to um, drop in billboards in Rhino. So if we change this to our rendered view, all of these trees are PNG files. And um, let's say we wanted to uh, change out all of the files of this particular tree instance. We could go into the um, Park Textures folder that we have, or you could grab any PNG file that you have. And let's just say we wanted to replace all of these images. We could just drag another one over top and it's going to automatically update all of those files in the Rhino document. So every instance of a, um, a PNG file is the same. It's basically a component. I'm just going to undo that because I don't want to actually change all of those trees. I just wanted to show you what would happen if you had something that is a PNG file selected and you dragged in a new PNG, it would update all of those files. So when you drag in a PNG, you want to make sure that you're not, um, you don't have anything else selected. And then for example, we can go into um, that same park textures folder. And let's say we want to add um, this grass file here. We just drag it and drop it here and it will bring up this image options dialog box and we're just going to bring it in as a picture like that and it's going to ask you for a location so I'm going to put it over here into the stormwater grasses and it'll ask for a scale um, so I'm just going to select a size that makes sense maybe around there and now if we look at this file, we can see that it has been dropped in as a PNG. Now you have to be careful with your PNGs. This one definitely has some white outlines on it and that's not ideal when you're rendering. So you do wanna make sure that you minimize those white outlines as much as you can while you're cutting out images. And if you need an, a reminder on how to cut out images correctly, I will link the, in the video for that in this um, description. So once you have dropped your PNG file in and you've um, scaled it and placed it, um, I'm just going to change my view to perspective so that we're not in two point perspective anymore. You can use your gumball to rotate it upright like this and then bring it up to the correct height in your image. And remember to use the face camera command if you want to turn um, all of the images um, towards a certain orientation to your camera. Now in this case, um, I would want to probably go into my layers palette and create a new layer for um, grasses. And then I would put that into that layer. And I could uh, just use Alt and click on this arrow, arrow to duplicate if I wanted to duplicate the file. And in this way, you can begin kind of building up um, the foreground planting areas within your Rhino file if you're going to be rendering in Rhino. These might translate to a render program. I haven't tested it yet with Lumion, um, but I will give that a test and let you know how it goes. So of course you can add in people as well. I'm going to go into one of my people folders here and just um, select a file. When you're looking at billboards, the thing that you'll want to watch out for is um, if they already have shadows attached, you definitely don't wanna use those files. You just want to have the outline of the person itself. And the other thing is people like this aren't gonna work as billboards because they have um, people at diff different depths going off into the distance. You really want somebody who has both feet kind of flat on the ground here. Otherwise it's gonna look like pieces of it are floating. So I'm going to try to find uh, somebody um, that this could work for. Um, so let's grab. This one, this one looks good. So they don't have shadows and their feet are relatively level onto the ground plane. So um, when we stand them upright, they're not going to look like their feet are floating or they're going off into the distance. So I'm going to just make sure nothing is selected in my Rhino file and go back into my um, PNG and drag it in. And 
and now it's um, confirming that we're going to bring it in as a picture and I can pop it in there. Now then you'll want to scale the image accordingly. So the first thing I'll do is just bring that upright and uh, bring their feet up to ground level. And then I can use a, um, a guiding line to measure the height of these children. So um, I can't remember which units I'm in. So, okay, I'm in feet. So probably this one is a, about three feet tall. So I'm going to draw a line, um, L for line, and then V for vertical. I'll start it at the corner and I'll go up three feet and click enter. That is the size my person should be. As you see, I scaled it way too high. So I'm just going to um, use SC to scale, grab the same corner and use that as the uh, reference and then bring them down to the correct scale. So I can delete my guiding line. Um, now the people are at the right size for this image and I can move them around. Okay, I've zoomed back out to uh, this wider view and I just wanted to show you how easy it is to do some basic material mapping in Rhino. Uh, so it's really just as easy as dragging and dropping just like the image files or the PNG files. Let's just grab this um, light green grass file here and um, I'm going to just drag it in. And again, it's gonna ask us what we want and I'm gonna just select material like this, okay? And I want to go to my materials. I can see it right here, grass light green. It just took on the same name as the um, file that I dragged in. And I can then drag this and assign it to a surface just like that. So you see that uh, the, the texture mapping worked, but it's at completely the wrong scale. So how can we fix that? That's really easy. Let's go into our properties panel and then go down to texture mapping here. Making sure that that um, material slash surface is selected. Basically, you just wanna go down here to the repeat. So this is a seamless texture, which basically means it can be expanded in all directions without seeing a visible seam. Um, and those are the types of textures that we really want to be looking for and using in Rhino. Um, there's a whole bunch of free ones online. I'll try to make a link to a few websites where you can download these types of files. Um, but they're also easy to create in Photoshop if you need to. Um, so if I just change this repeat, let's try 10. You can see that it already changed something about the mapping and then 10 again. And we really want to pay attention to what we're doing. U, V, W. What is U, V, W? Those are our coordinates. So U um, is usually the X axis, V is the Y axis, and W is the Z axis. I know that's a little bit of a mind meld, but that's how it is. So if we zoom in, we can see it's still a bit out of scale. So we might want to try an even bigger um, repeat. So I'm going to go with 50 and 50. And now if I look at the scale of this drawing, that's looking a little bit better. I would even try maybe 60 and 60. And if I look at the, the rest of the scale of the objects in the scene, this grass looks pretty good to me. So texture mapping can be as basic as that. And of course, there are way more complex things that you can do. If you have displacement maps or bump files, those will give uh, the illusion of depth to a file. But just to get a basic texture on, this works really well. So let's try it with another material. For example, this concrete material here. I'm actually have already loaded in a few um, uh, textures into this document. So if you just uh, go down and um, you can search for concrete. Okay, nothing came up. Try polished concrete. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna grab this polished concrete. It's already in the file and I'm just going to assign it to that. And again, you can see it's a little bit out of scale. So we probably need to change the texture mapping. And that's already looking better, but we can go, I think, even smaller. 
And now we can see this texture shows up as a concrete curb within this document. So um, we can take our Rhino files and do a lot with them with materials right in the document itself. We don't even really need to move to a separate rendering program. And you can keep going and looking for um, texture files that would fit the uh, scene that you're trying to create. So if you wanted to add sand or mulch or different types of planting, um, you can go ahead and do that. If you wanted to add a different paving material to the paths, um, those will be a little bit more complex because they are curving. So I would be cautious about using uh, like um, really detailed uh, paving maps, um, but your sort of average cobble or concrete paver should work pretty well there as well.